level force has penetrated the shield and landed on Endor. This is where the fun begins. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. This is Rebel Force Radio. Your source for the Force. Star Wars news and commentary. With Jason Swank and Jimmy Mack. I've seen Star Wars 500 times. Star Wars number one. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it. Now it's time for Rebel Force Radio. We would be honored if you would join us. Welcome back to Rebel Force Radio, everybody. So nice to have you with us. I almost feel like we're cheating this week. Only one Rebel Force Radio podcast to uh, to record. Recorded late last week, so it feels like we just left this party. But we got lots of stuff to talk about. Of course, Ahsoka still on, still top of mind, and the fallout continues. I hope we have a chance to get to both of our voicemails this week because we got two good ones. We got two really good ones. Uh, one, it, one is he says it's a hot take, and he's absolutely right. It is a hot take. I'm hoping we get uh, to both. Both of them are really good. We love to have your voicemails, so uh, please uh, ring us up and uh, drop us a voicemail. Or if you're uh, if you're so technically skilled, you can you know do one of those voice memos and then send it to show at Rebel Force Radio. Dot com, but we're in store for a great show this week. We got a giveaway. If you joined us last week with Kyle Newman, you know that uh, he's got a new book out. This is it right here. Dungeons and Dragons Lore and Legends, all about this latest iteration of Dungeons and Dragons, which is uh, largely responsible for sort of the resurgence that it has had. So we got a signed copy. We'll be giving that away. All the details were given away last week. We'll announce the winner this week. We got Star Wars and pop culture that we want to get to, plus some news about a S- Star Wars that might have been. Yeah. Star Wars things that could have happened but didn't happen. Got a couple of stories on that. So here to uh, help me with all that and so much more is, of course, my good friend and yours from Chicago, Jimmy Mack. Hey, Jason. Hey, Star Wars fans. Good to be back here with Rebel Force Radio once again. Yeah, sure. Uh it might be uh, just one show this week for Jason Swank, but uh, as our Patreon supporters know, uh, there's there's always at least two there are for Jimmy Mack. And uh, we have an RFR Q&A that just launched uh, just a couple days ago. And, um, of course, last week we released Babu Freaks. Babu Freaks is a monthly show over at RFR on Patreon. And it's a lot of fun. It's with the Chicago area crew. Uh, guys I met through uh, various Star Wars fandom events and uh, what have you. And, and so we get together for a lot of laughs every month on Patreon with the Babu Freaks. Hey, hey! And uh, talking about Star Wars things that may have happened but never did, this definitely fits into the category. Star Wars Happy Meals that never happened. We have information about Star Wars Happy Meals that could have happened in the 90s, but never did. And uh, this all comes through some uh, research that Babu Freak Barry Harmon has been doing. And he laid it on us on the most recent episode of Babu Freaks. And so we thought we'd share it here on the weekly RFR. So uh, let's bring in Barry because he discovered something very interesting at a Chicago area uh, pop culture uh, w- warehouse, for lack of better terms. I'll, I'll let you explain, Barry. But as most people know, McDonald's Corporation is in the Chicago area and has been forever. For the longest time, it was out in Oak Brook, Illinois, just outside Chicago, and not far from the suburbs uh, that surround the area that me and Barry live in. So occasionally, McDonald's memorabilia or what have you will slip out into the public. And usually that doesn't matter to us here on RFR, but when it has a tie into Star Wars, it becomes very interesting. So Barry, how you doing? Well, hey hey. Oh, that's a very oh a very Uh, tempered hey hey. On the Babu Freaks. Well the last time I did it. (laughs) What happened? Did you injure yourself? Off the mic, remember? (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> he blew out the money. <laughs> so, um, no, but yeah, hey, hey. And, you know, just so people know, they need to watch all 34 episodes of Babu Freaks to understand this episode of RFR, just like how you need to watch every <laughs> Rebels to understand Ahsoka. Yeah. So, we require a lot I mean, of homework. <laughs> it's basic. Babu Freaks has become the Ahsoka show for Tyler Page. That's the way I see it. So, like, people are like, oh, he has a spinoff? You know, so you got to. <laughs> oh, my God. Is Tyler the Ahsoka Tano of Rebel Force Radio? Well, I mean, he hardly speaks on Babu Freaks, and Ahsoka's hardly in her own show. So it's fitting, I guess. Yeah, let's give him a series. <laughs> wow. This, I wasn't expecting <laughs> such uh, editorializing from you right out of the gate, Barry. But... I'm kidding. I love Tyler. We're We're best friends. We hang out. We do stuff, so he, he gets it. He's all right. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, so real art, this place, um, it is, it was, because it just recently closed, it's kind of like a mini uh, toy show, like 24-7. Every time they open their doors, it's like you're walking into one of those old school uh, pop culture toy shows where, like, you can find anything. It's kind of some of the stuff's a little dirty sitting on the floor, but the prices are insanely good. They're always having sales. And I mean, maybe that's why they didn't stay in business, because some of the finds that I had there were I mean, they, they could have charged a lot more for it. But I was digging through the back of their warehouse on their final day and sitting on the shelf was this uh, white binder. And this <laughs> thing, it was just you know, nondescript sitting up there. And I, yeah, it's I just, just like in a Star three Wars ring binder. Grabbed it. Yeah. It's yeah. like what you would have in school, three, a white three ring binder. And then, then there's like a, like a makeshift cover, just a, you know, a Xerox cover sheet right there in the, in the slip on the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very and nondescript. I can see why this thing might've just hung around. Yeah. Like no real thought put into actually trying to make it look anything other than what it was intended for, just yeah, like there's no logo on the front, there's no yeah. you know color artwork or right. anything. You know, I, I'm guessing no one really knew what this was, and they were passing it up. I'm glad they did because I got my hands on it. But it it's from Simon Marketing Inc. March fifth, ninety six was, I believe, the presentation, or at least maybe the beginning of of some sort of project. But it's dated February seventh, ninety nineteen ninety seven, which lines mm. up with the special editions coming out. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I, I provided Jimmy's with scans of this whole thing. So if people are on Patreon, they can look at it as we talk about it, but it's, um, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I know the drawings later on in the book are really cool, but I really like the corporate speak here. Like the, uh, descriptions uh do they take they all the things... fun out of star wars <laughs> i'm sure they oh, do Oh, absolutely well we'll go through yeah, some yeah, of that yeah. stuff as we actually look at some of the illustrations that were contained within so this is just a, a binder it says on the front star wars happy meal black and white concept presentation presented by simon mm -hmm. marketing apparently to the mcdonald's corporation simon marketing are the guys who are coming up with, uh, I guess, Happy Meal toy ideas. And they came up with a ton yep. of them for Star Wars. And uh, none of these actually saw the light of day, as far as I can tell. There might be some variants on them that have been released uh, throughout the years with various other fast food tie-ins. But Jason just put the first one up on the screen. And it's a sand crawler that you can pull the top. Like, the top of it is hinged, and you can pull it up. You see R2, Jawa, and 3PO. And these are mini play sets. And according to what the pitch says, based on the Polly Pocket concept, does anybody <laughs> remember uh, Polly yeah. Pocket? Does anybody remember that? Um, I, I do. My daughter was into Polly Pocket. I know it well, yeah. Kids can open up the various Star Wars vehicles and find movable figures on the inside battling for control of the galaxy. And they had four of them that they had ideas for, a Death Star playset, Bantha playset, Sandcrawler playset, which we see, and a Tatooine Cantina playset, which Jason just put on the screen. Oh, it looks like I really dig the Cantina. I, I don't think we've ever gotten a bandstand, and that's what this is. It's the Cantina bandstand. And it looks like you know you 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 flip open the top, and what's the what's the top? Oh, the top is the outside of the cantina with the stormtrooper 
standing guard and uh and that's cool and then you got the bandstand and they, i guess they move maybe from side to side or something there's a arrow notating some motion there that's a cool one i like that yeah it's says- oh the ga- the cantina group plays so they got playing action so yeah with ben luke and han on sticker art so that would be uh, lining the inside bowl there. So, like, the sticker would represent their audience, which would be made up of Han, Luke, and Ben. Uh, there's the Death Star, where you open it up, it splits in the middle, and it's hinged, and you open it up, and inside you see Obi-Wan and Vader having a sword fight. That's that's their word, sword fight. I call it a saber duel, but they call it sword fight. <laughs> sword fight. And yeah. uh, You notice it has a little loop? you can actually turn it into a Christmas ornament. <laughs> oh, very festive. You see that? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Uh, and then a bantha. Bantha. Bantha, like a bantha. Which this is fun. Yeah, so the bantha, you, he splits in half, and then you've got the uh, the land speeder. Yeah. You got the land speeder flying across the desert. Definitely uh, very exciting. Very exciting as you, you're splitting these creatures in half and, and seeing this. This reminds me a little bit of the micro machines that we saw. Remember? Very those much back so. Before? Yeah, the, the Galoob micro machine sets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But Ooh. so those are the mini play sets. Four of them would have been available. None of them actually got produced. This is something interesting. Fold-out playbooks. Put together these fun playbooks by collecting a new piece each week and making a fun fold-up-and-out playset. Limited action figures and realistic backdrops will allow kids to play out their favorite Star Wars scenes. Four is the magic number for for these marketers. They have uh, Han Solo with the Millennium Falcon. Luke Skywalker Cantina, Darth Vader Death Star, Princess Leia Rebel Base. So each week you'd have to go back to get the two parts Mm -hmm. that make up the play set, and then the third week you'd probably get the figure. I don't know how that works. That's a lot of French fries and Big Macs. I see. So (laughs) it's one one play set, but depending on how you turn it, or is it four different? No, it's four different places. It's right four bad. different. I yes. see. It's four different ones. This is giving me Palatoy Death Star vibes a little bit. You a know, little bit. Got the cardboard yeah. dome. I like that. So you can have different environments within the setting. So there's different parts of the Millennium Falcon, the Dejeric table, the cockpit, and uh, the little uh, the hallway or whatever you want to call it, the tube that connects the cockpit then uh, to the living area and then... Vader's Death Star, it's hard to see, but I love these drawings. These sketches, I think, are maybe in some ways more fun than the actual item might have been. I just love to (laughs) see the artist's uh, take on this stuff. Yeah, and it's shades of the artwork from Sergio Aragones from Mad Magazine. Uh, that's that's what I think. And if, if you know Sergio's work, you he's the guy who drew all the little funny illustrations in the in the uh, borders of the uh, panels. And uh, just so he's a legend. And so I, I, I sense that this yeah. artist may have been inspired by Sergio Aragones. But so, yeah, those are the um, fold out playbooks. And we'll put this video up on YouTube so everyone can see it because it's it's so visually oriented. We want you guys to see all this artwork as well as we do. And uh, here's our next category in the pitch. It's character vehicle launchers. A bust of your favorite Star Wars character is available that opens from the back and can launch a cool Star Wars vehicle. Boy, some of the uh, the wording of these sentences uh, needed to be tightened up before the pitch. But uh, <laughs> So uh, a bust of the your favorite Star Wars character opens from the back and can launch a cool Star Wars vehicle. You have Princess Leia, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker. So it looks like out of the back of Leia's head flies the Rebel Blockade Runner. Um, do we see what comes out of Luke and Vader's heads? No, no we don't. No. They don't. They don't they, illustrate it. That, well, we're getting into the well. next category here, but I'm going to guess that it's Darth Vader's Tie Fighter, and then for Luke, it is the the Land Speeder. The Land Speeder. Maybe a next wing. Maybe. But they seem very grounded mm. in a New Hope here, so far. Well, that would uh, next wing would qualify. Right. Yes. Next in our premium concept ideas for 
McDonald's Happy Meals. We have exciting play sets that feature a full head representation of a Star Wars character with an added plus. Open the face and inside is a magnetic character that moves through a Star Wars scene. So what's 3PO doing Wow. Here? Oh, I guess they're just trucking through the desert. Oh, they're trying to avoid sand people and Jawas. And that looks very good. got the Larses is there. Boy, yeah, those... you know, it's their whole journey. Right. Yeah. It, yeah, it goes right. Right. You, yeah, Crate Dragon. It goes. Yeah, it's the whole journey there on their way to uh, find Owen and, and Luke from the Escape Pod, Crate Dragon, Jawas, Tuscans. Joseph Campbell referred to it as the hero's journey in a fast food bag. <laughs> so those are the face play sets. You have uh, 3PO, Chewbacca, Vader, and Obi-Wan. Do we know what? Those are fun illustrations, I will say. That is the yeah, real. I love them. Great stuff. Great stuff. All right. Next up should be the pop-outs. Pinch in the Star Wars vehicle and up pops the character inside. So pinch the Star Wars vehicle and up pops the character. Kids can collect and play out their Star Wars action sequences. You have R2-D2, you, you squeeze R2 and Leia pops out. You squeeze the Sandcrawler, Jawa and R2 pop out. X-Wing Fighter, R2 pops out. TIE Fighter, Darth Vader pops out. Hours of fun, Jason. Hours of fun. <laughs> you know. I would have I would have left the kids alone on the floor with this when they were little and and you know probably just would have left gone to a ball game or something. I I wouldn't have anything to worry about. I know that they would have been uh, kept busy and uh, safe at home playing with the McDonald's toys. These are pretty ambitious ideas though, more so than what you typically see. In I was just going to say these are far cooler. Yeah. than anything that I've ever seen in a in a happy meal. Especially Star Wars. I mean, I've got this is the coolest thing I ever got from a uh, a Star Wars Happy Meal before, and it was these little. Uh, <laughs> you remember these? Uh, I'm, here's I a Luke, do. and here's a Han yeah. Solo. I can't. What do you these do are from with the them? Early two thousands, I think. Here's Han, and you you smash. You can shrink him down, and then you just got like his head and his name, but then. But wait, there's more. If you look inside, there's something about inside of it. Oh, there's a picture. Fun. Yeah, there's a picture inside. Wow. Yeah, so. But I mean, you get the idea. Like, there's nothing remotely as uh, as cool as what we're seeing here in these in these images. These are, and this is probably why they didn't happen. I'm sure the price to produce <laughs> these things at the volume that they would need to for Happy Meal was just prohibitive. I can only imagine. All right, so we see the X-Wing, we see the Vader, you squeeze it, Vader pops out, you squeeze the X-Wing, R2 pops out. Uh, so what do we have next? It should be magnetic play sets. There they are, magnetic play sets. These slate play sets have a magnetic pencil so kids can move around the Star Wars characters. So I assume that uh, they're inside, like... Um, Underneath a plastic screen, and mm. you take the magnet, and you can move around the ships and the characters. You can build three PO in the droid workshop. You can visit the. Jawa this looks like trainers. hours of frustration to me. Yeah. Can you imagine <laughs> trying to get those parts just right? Ooh, it would probably be I impossible. Can. Because yes, three PO <laughs> is in in six pieces. R two is in five pieces. It would be really hard to get them together. Get the magnet just to attract the right piece. But those look pretty neat. Um, Death. It's kind of like color forms, but with magnetic like woolly willies. Yeah, oh yeah, yes. woolly willy. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. They could have done the beards of Star Wars or, or do a George Lucas one. You Ooh. can make his beard. Oh, that would have been part a know. Wooly Willy, a George, a Wooly George. That we, would be fantastic. Yeah. We need to go visit McDonald corporate offices and pitch them ourselves. <laughs> you know, who needs Simon marketing when, when you got us three mental geniuses here? <laughs> All right. So we have next dishware. Yes, dishware. This is the Star Wars dish that. set. <laughs> Kids can come in and collect new Star Wars dish set pieces each week. Mealtime can become a fun adventure to inspire kids to finish all their food so they can grow strong in the force. 
Well, here you see you have the Millennium Falcon bowl with lightsaber utensils, including spoon, knife, and fork, the R2-D2 cup and straw. So uh, very nice. You got the Millennium Falcon bowl. That looks like a lot of fun to eat your uh, Cheerios out of, uh, R2-D2 cup with the straw. The straw, I think, is like his uh, his little radar his little radar device that pops up out of the top of his head. Yeah. That's the straw. Yeah. And of course these lightsaber utensils, these have now been done. So you can get lightsaber handled utensils. I've seen these out in the wild oh. before. There was a cereal promotion where they were light up yes. spoons. Yes. Yes. yes there was yes. breakfast. Cereal. Right. Yep. I have. Those several. are amazing. So, uh, yeah, you know, these are great ideas that, you know, some of them actually just by sheer coincidence happened much later in the future. They should learn how to spell the word millennium as two N's. Oh, there they spelled it right. (laughs) The one on top wasn't. This is the Jedi survival kit. Kids love to role play. The Jedi kit will allow kids to act out their own battles and adventures against the Empire. The kit will include fun accessories that kids can use to learn to become Jedi Masters. Boy, really, the sentence structure of this chucklehead sales guy who put this pitch together and then, of course, left it at the pop culture warehouse for Barry to find 20-something years later. It's just insanity. An insane Star Wars life we live. Uh, So there it is, the survival kit. Uh, Jedi lightsaber glow light, Millennium Falcon compass. Help you know, you know what uh, every Jedi needs? He needs a uh, flashlight hanging at his belt <laughs> that looks exactly like his lightsaber hilt, so he never knows which one he's grabbing. Is it the <laughs> flashlight? Is it? Oh, no, it's the lightsaber. Sorry. <laughs> As he impales his, <laughs> his dog. Oh, I like the R2. <laughs> the R2 canteen and cup looks like a really cool... It, it's probably more like a thermos where you screw off R2's yeah. dome and use it as a cup and you dump your your coffee or whatever you have in your thermos there. Yeah, the next one's my favorite because the Y-Wing gets no love. No. And they actually made, yeah. <laughs> they made the Y-Wing into a pair of binoculars, which is brilliant, actually. I mean, it's a natural. Yeah, it sure is. I could see that. I mean, this is like better than the crap they sell at Star Wars Celebration in the exclusive store. Yeah. Why wing fighter binocs? So the engines are the binoculars. You look through the two engines, and and there you're you're seeing across the room. Incredible, incredible. What do we have next? Ooh, figure vehicle viewers. So these are interesting. Great-looking figures or vehicles from the Star Wars trilogy mounted on a base, but not an ordinary base. When kids flip the base over and look through the bottom, exciting scenes from the movie can be seen by holding the toy up to light. So, Jason, this is kind of similar to that thing you were just showing us a few minutes ago, the Han Solo device where you look in and you can see an exciting scene from the movie. It is. It is. Although I got to tell you, I was just fiddling around with this thing and I figured out what the thing is. You hit this button and mm-hmm. then you see the character inside. Oh, it's like oh. the light shines and there's oh, yeah. Lando. Like Lando hologram. is inside Han. I always knew that Lando was living inside Han's head. <laughs> yeah, and here yeah. he is <laughs> Yeah, right there. He can't get away from him. And then the That's Luke amazing. Skywalker version is, oh, who do you think? All right, guys, who's, who's Luke thinking about? Leia. Leia. Barry, what do you say? I, I'm going to say Luke's 3PO's head. in there. <laughs> inside Luke's head. No. Darth Vader is inside oh. Luke's head. He can't get him out of his head. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. That'll happen. <laughs> That'll happen. So we have the vehicle, f- the figure vehicle viewers. Four different kinds. Millennium Falcon, TIE Fighter, R2-D2, and 3CPO. I got to point out the detail <laughs> of the drawings there. Look at that. They... I know that little tiny postage stamp size. Check that out of that iconic shot that we've seen a million times of Han, Luke, Chewie, and old Ben in the cockpit of the Falcon. And I see what Jim's saying. This does have a very mad magazine type quality to it, but yeah. Yeah. We, 
we don't know the artist, but they must have done work in Mad Magazine, especially with the next page. This, yeah. Oh, so yeah, what's next fun. then? Oh, that's the Millennium Falcon and TIE Fighter figure vehicle yeah. viewer. Oh, now we get into right. mini plush. We've seen this a lot of times over the years for Star Wars. Mini plush characters. Yo. Plush has always been a popular kids' toy. We propose kids being able to collect their favorite Star Wars characters as cute plush toys. And here we have Chewbacca, Yoda, Wicket the Ewok, and 3CPO. And this is the first time in this whole pitch that we've seen anything outside of A New Hope. That's true. Oh, with Wicket. Is that, is that right? Yeah, with oh. Wicket and Yoda. Everything else has been, the character designs and yeah. everything has been very A New Hope oriented. Very it's true. all A New Hope. All A New Hope. Yeah, that's right, Jason. But, you know, if you're going to make many plush characters of Star Wars, and that is a very right. well-fed Ewok, too, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chewie hasn't missed too many meals either. Uh, he looks pretty gassed. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Look oh. at that face. <laughs> it's cute. It yeah, reminds me of uh, Yo Yoda. Actually, looks like <laughs> Yoda looks he's like with no hey, pain guys. either. Yeah, Yoda looks like he's been hitting the pipe a little bit. I think. <laughs> hey man, the force is everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now oh, we're getting into Lord. some solid gold territory here. It's something we've always oh, wanted. Oh, my gosh. Star Wars McNuggets. We got Star Wars McNuggets here. Oh. The McNuggets have joined the battle against the Empire. Uh, Everybody, see, now I'm really getting upset that these haven't been made. Everybody's favorite McNuggets characters are back <laughs> and in new costumes from their favorite movie, Star Wars. So you have the uh, McNuggets. Now this looks like this looks like sand sweet. It does. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm glad you. So that's the uh, that's the Obi Wan McNugget. By the way, Jason, looking at yeah. all of these items reminds me of when we helped Steve organize a giant shipment of stuff that he saved from being destroyed at Skywalker right. Ranch, and it was a bunch of marketing material from. The prequels, and it, they were actual pitches yes. from the agencies that wanted to represent the film, wanted to do the uh, the advertising for the prequels, and there was there were pitches for each of the three prequel films. Yes, it was, and we sw we got into uh, way late into the night. We were going through boxes of stuff with Steve and just cracking up at some of the pitches. So. Upon you giving me these images to share with our Patreon audience and now RFR, the RFR Nation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds pretty good. I never used that before. I like that. Um, I like it. But uh, I, I was like, well, you know, I got to share this with Mr. Sansweet. So I sent it to him and I'm like, Steve, have you ever seen this before? He's like, no way. Never seen this before. Yes. And he's like, wow. this is my favorite kind of stuff. So. <laughs> he, he loves it. But we have the Star Wars yeah, dump sand suite. I love it. I would rather have instead of the pitch, I'd rather have the McNuggets in my collection. You have Darth oh, Vader, Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan, R2, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, C3PO, and Han Solo. And yeah, yeah. They they spelled it right. McNugget this time. Buddies. They spelled it C three PO. They got it right this time. So the Tracy Morganized <laughs> three CPO. Right. <laughs> but once that. again, everybody in their new hope duds. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Han Solo's there looking very McNuggety. Uh, very, you know, <laughs> the Chewbacca, very hairy McNugget. I've had hairy McNuggets before at McDonald's. Yeah, do you recommend? No, no, no. I've had, okay. Uh, there, was, there was some, some, I had to throw them away. Uh, so th that's fun. So I guess they, they were marketing little McNugget guys, and they would put them in the Happy Meals. And so these guys are proposing, let's make them Star Warsy. So that's that's fun. Uh, next up, we have the Star Wars desk set. <laughs> desk the least stuff. Fun. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for all those. Uh, what every kid wants. Yeah, yeah. Is a nameplate for his desk that, the, you, that you know the teacher's not going to allow him to have. He's going to bring that in. He's going to want to set it on his desk. And you can't have that. <laughs> why? Because none of the other kids have one. Oh. That's why. 
Wow. Well, tell them to go to McDonald's. Yes, yes. Get their cholesterol up and get a nameplate. This, you could get a Star Wars nameplate, C-3PO sharpener. Oh, stamper. Stamper. So you stamp. Oh. Um, ink stamp. Oh. Uh, yeah. he, why does 3PO have, like, dead eyes? You know? Yeah. They're, 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 this whole page looks like they hired, had someone else draw. Yeah. This doesn't yeah. look like the other artists. This doesn't have the Mad Magazine quality. Well, it kind no, of look, look at the picture. Oh, right? please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is all just a bunch of scribbles now. Oh my god. But what we're looking my at ten year old <laughs> that is the um Star Wars frame. So it's yeah. a picture frame. You can also get the Star Wars nameplate, C three PO stamper, Millennium Falcon tape dispenser, lightsaber pen, Ben Kenobi ruler, Darth Vader caddy. Caddy. Oh, I get I see it's like a it looks like the Darth Vader mug I had for the yeah, longest yeah. time. I had the yeah. Darth Vader mug on my desk, yeah. holding pencils and scissor and all that. Now I have the Rancho Obi Wan mug. Yeah. That's what I have on my desk. And uh, the R two D two sharpener. So R two D two is your pencil sharpener there. Okay. A sloppy drawing of R two. So yeah, yeah. They, oh, you they, know they were almost done, and their artist called in sick, and they're like, "But the pitch yeah. is tomorrow. What are we gonna do?" Or the artist whipped it up in the car ride over or something. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it. That explains. I like this stamp. So the three PO stamp, the actual stamp part. You know, when you stamp it down on the paper or whatever, it says Star Wars Jedi, and then there's like a little box for you to like to put in your own name. See so right in there, mm. Jimmy Mac, Star Wars Jedi, boom. Yeah, that that seals the deal. Yeah. So uh, up next, you have voice modulating masks. Strap-on masks can make kids into Star Wars characters, not in just how they look, but how they talk. Kids can speak through the modulator and talk just like their favorite character. You have uh, C-3PO, Chewbacca, Imperial Stormtrooper, and Darth Vader. Yes. And then, so then the next question for the marketing group, the Simon marketing group is a uh, really, so a kid can just talk into uh, the mask and sound like uh, Chewbacca. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Well, how does this technology work? Uh, well, <laughs> well, we thought you were going to hey, figure hey, that out. No, we're, we're the idea guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So it's interesting. Well, we got to invent this crap too. Come on! It's interesting though because it's only the bottom halves of their face. So you have the bottom half of the stormtrooper. So it's just that like little mouthy part of his, and then the the place where you plug in the the air breathing tubes. And with Vader, you only have the triangle grill in his nose. Chewbacca. Gives you kind of a rat face look when you put yeah. that on. Yeah, those, those yeah. like a mole. That'd be interesting. All right, what's next in the pitch? I'm sure the McDonald's folks are going to buy into this. Badge talkers, they call them. Clip-on talk badges can allow kids to hear the Force wherever they go. These badges are in the shape of their favorite Star Wars characters or vehicles and play back famous Star Wars sounds or phrases from the movie. R2, 3PO, Chewbacca, and Darth Vader. Now I am the master. (laughs) <laughs> and then R2 would beep, Chewie would just growl, and 3PO would probably say, oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so, or he'd say, don't get technical with me. Nice. <laughs> That's good. You must have. You have yeah, one. In your, you have a badge talker <laughs> in your collection. That's great. I've got one. So you my... slap them like a Star Trek badge? I guess you wear it, and then you just. That's yes, number one. <laughs> <laughs> I am the master. <laughs> Excuse me, number one. Something's malfunctioning. What? My commun- <laughs> That's my Darth Vader one right there. <laughs> All right. Next up is Star Wars Flyers. Star Wars Flyers. Star Wars Flyers. Oh, look at this. This looks these fun. fun. So uh, these, yeah. yeah, they. It says in the pitch itself, Jason, that these are fun. They're. Fun. <laughs> it, it says it right there in the pitch. These are fun yeah. action toys. In case you based were worried on- with the desk set. These are fun action toys based on the great space vehicles that are in all the Star Wars movies. Kids can launch their own raids on the Death Star or explore a new galaxy when they launch these flying yeah. vehicles. The Falcon, TIE Fighter, Death Star Frisbee. Oh, the Death Star Disc. I like that. And Landspeeder. 
Yeah, why is that, why has no one done a Death Star frisbee yet? These these are just ideas, right for the pickets. They're begging to be. So made. the tie copter is cool. So it's like um like a ripcord sort of thing. Yeah. It's like you you pull the ripcord, yeah. it spins, yeah. and the tie fighter just sort of takes off. But this is even better. The Millennium Falcon is a blow launcher, oh. like a blow, like a dart gun, like a blow, <laughs> <laughs> like a blow dart. When the, the Death Star disc reminds me of, you know, when Mon Mothma said that she thought the Death Star was a sphere, but it's actually a disc. <laughs> well, that's a deep cut, Barry. That is a deep cut. Yes. Re Rebel Force Radio, we had the pleasure many, many moons ago to talk to the moon mother herself, Carolyn Blackiston, the original Mon Mothma actress. And uh, we talked to her about the role and uh, she explained to us, uh, she must have been one of those flat earthers. Because she flat believed mooners. that the, the flat mooner, that's right. She believed that the moon was flat like a plate. We had a big eclipse and I put these binoculars up to my eyes and saw for the first time in my life that the moon is round. It's not flat like a plate. It comes towards us. It's rounded. Anyway, I, I think we misunderstood her. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, but we got a lot of mileage out of that. So check that out. It's probably on YouTube. Our interview with the moon mother herself. This is Rebel Force Radio, your source for the Force, with Jason Swank and Jimmy Mack. The galaxy is listening. So uh, let's burn through the rest of these. Oh, these are figural card are awesome. holders. Kids and parents oh. love collecting Star Wars memorabilia. They especially love collecting trading cards. This figural base with slide-in cards will be a collector's favorite. So you have a figure, I guess, a, a figure on a base, and it stands in front of a frame, and you slide your trading card into the frame. And the figure is removable. You could take the figure off the base. So you have a Darth Vader figure on the base, and you could I put in any trading card, I guess. <laughs> Does it come with the card? Uh, yeah, I guess. So. I don't know, but I, I'm just I'm picturing Darth Vader... You know, in his room, in his quarters, with a giant poster of Ben Kenobi <laughs> hanging up, like <laughs> his Obi Wan poster. You know, like in a kid's bedroom. All of a sudden, you know, you have your... all of a sudden, the 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 hologram of the Emperor pops up in the room, and is, oh, you told me you'd never call me at home. <laughs> <laughs> what do I see on the wall, Lord Vader? I can't get. I just even get a little bit of privacy. I mean, <laughs> that's a picture. They're, they're giving you some some options here that, that the cards could be lenticular, mm -hmm. they could be holographic, they could be prismatic. Yeah, the, the sky's could the limit. Automatic. The sky's the limit. Like I said, when it comes to the technology, these are just the idea, guys. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, and the bases connect together. It's going to have oh, a nice little display. Look at that. Nice little shrine. That's very cool. So who you what, who you don't have a figure of. You'll have a card of mm. exciting stuff, yes, exciting sir. stuff. So more from the lost McDonald's Happy Meal, Star Wars Happy Meal pitch. These are lightsaber figures. Kids can battle the Empire with these fun lightsabers. Just push the lightsaber switch and up pops a Star Wars character, Luke 3 po Leia Vader. Well, if you ever wanted to take uh, C-3PO into your mouth, you can with this uh, pop saber figure. Is that what this is? Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to put it in your mouth. And oh, I thought it was a sucker. No, no, they're <laughs> figures. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're figures. I thought, I thought it was a sucker. No. <laughs> Do not put yeah. three PO in your mouth. <laughs> I, thought, <I'm, laughs> I thought I thought it was like a candy sucker, and like you you lick around it, and then you free the figure. You know, like the figure's the uh, stick up inside. All right. There's I'm a my own pitch here. Yes, well, yeah. You can tell the the ideas are starting to uh, run a little short Vader's here now as we get, get later into the pitch. But but hey, you know, don't look away quite yet because coming up we have Star Wars melting asteroids. Star Wars melting <laughs> asteroids. Asteroids. So you take the asteroid, you drop it into a cup in the asteroid. Uh, disappears and and uh, within the asteroid it, oh, it like dissolves okay. yeah dissolve asteroid yep. in water to reveal 
the Millennium Falcon, R2-D2, Luke Skywalker, the Death Star. Kenner did this with uh, Phantom Menace. You remember like the mystery packs of like creatures? Oh, yes. Yes. Those were a lot. Yeah. Of mm-hmm. Right. They look like real asteroids, but plop them into water and watch the <laughs> asteroid rock melt away into your favorite Star Wars characters. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Star what Wars a cool figure it is. Melting. This is a bad idea for McDonald's because so many kids would tell their parents, go up and ask them for a cup of water. You know. Oh yeah, right. And you know McDonald's, they don't want to give away the water. No. Tap water, they charge you fifty cents for the cup. Up All next, right. we have. I believe this is this is Star Wars hologram jewelry. Star Wars opened up a whole new era of thought as to technology of the future. Kids can open up a whole new jewelry collectible. All right, so you pop them open. Darth Vader clip on Luke hologram. So you 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 can wear it as a pin and then it opens up and inside you see the Luke hologram. There's holograms well, inside. Well, it's like a little it's like one. a little locket. Right. Yeah. You open up the Death Star, you get a Darth Vader hologram. That's a bracelet actually, the Death Star. Mm. The Millennium Falcon ring opens up to reveal Ooh. a Chewbacca hologram. That's some serious bling right there. Can you imagine yeah. being all decked out in this stuff? Well, they'll let you cut the lines to any of the hippest clubs in town if you are wearing this hologram jewelry from your Happy Meal. And then the R2-D2 so pennant opens up to reveal a Princess Leia hologram. Nice. So coming up next, you know, the action doesn't stop. Star Wars action plungers. Push in the plunger and pop open the exciting Star Wars scene and characters. Oh, so I see. So you press the plunger button, and uh, the X-Wing splits in two, and Luke Skywalker is standing in the middle Uh, with his lightsaber. You also It's a reveal. It's a reveal. You have R2, Chewbacca, and Death Star. 3PO is revealed when you break R2 apart. Han's revealed when you break Chewie apart. And then, of course, Vader with the Death Star. Exciting stuff. Huh. Yeah. Taco Bell did something like that, where it was the, the Death Star. Remember that? And then you kind of pump it, and it spins and opens. I just remember the cup toppers with Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. Oh, they did a nine. So Taco Bell actually got ended up getting the special edition meal. Uh, McDonald's lost out to them. So it's interesting oh. that one of the pitch items actually became a Taco oh, Bell. Oh, so this, this did resurface with the Taco Bell Happy Meal line. or well, Something not like Happy it, Meal, yeah. But, yeah. So they got the tie-in. Well, that's cool. The fast food promotion. Everybody wanted it. Oh, here we go. Oh, McDonald Land character mashups. Now things are getting real. Now things are getting real. <laughs> because... <laughs> You know, it's birdie. Character mashups in Star Wars have a, a vast history. You, of course, had the Disney characters were getting mashed up into Star Wars for years. The Muppet characters, even like even the characters from the film Cars, would get mashed up and become Star Wars. Don't characters. forget M and M's. M and M's, even. Well, now it's going to be the McDonald Land gang. And uh, <laughs> McDonald Land <laughs> characters are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Star Wars release by participating in their own version. Kids can collect their favorite characters already in costume to play out their own adventures. You have, so let's just guess what character would Ronald McDonald be? Uh, well, I think Luke Skywalker. That's right, Jason. <laughs> Birdie is Princess <laughs> Leia. Yes. Um, Fry Guy R2. There he is. Uh huh. Yeah. And the, oh, there's Ronald McDonald with the lightsaber. Right. And he's wearing the shorty <laughs> robe. Of course. But scroll back up yeah. to Darth Vader because we got Grimace <laughs> starring as Darth Vader. I think Darth Grimace is the star of this entire presentation. Darth Grimace. Darth Grimace. Look, oh, I'd recognize those crazy eyes anywhere. There he is. You know, I think they should have made Hamburglar. He should have been Darth Vader. He's the only villain in oh, McDonald's. He could have been Boba Fett. Oh, Hamburg- Hamburglar is Boba Fett. <laughs> Gotta get the stripes, though. Darth Grimace. What a find. <laughs> what a find. <laughs> You're right. You're right. He is the star. You know, I had a, a friend of mine ask me today, 
Um, he's like, what are you doing tonight? I said, I, you know, we got a, we got a podcast tonight, Rebel Force Radio. He goes, oh, you're still doing them? I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't we be? He's like, well, you know, Ahsoka ended. What are you guys going to talk about now that Ahsoka's over? Well, my friend, we've got Darth Grimace taking the spotlight tonight. Let that melt your face off. So <laughs> Darth Grimace is here. And He's like, no, really, what do you got tonight? He's like, Darth Grimace. Darth Grimace, you son of a... <laughs> So that's a yeah that he is the star of the whole presentation. Fry Guy R two wow. and of course Shorty Robe, Ronald McDonald. Oh, diecast posable figures. Uh, these pewter or gold colored figures and vehicles take the favorite Star Wars characters and turn them into true collector pieces. Kids and collectors will love the detail and rich coloration of these toys. Ooh. Luke Skywalker, Millennium Falcon, and. Was that it? That's all they did. Just those two. So that's it. Um, just wow. so we know what this has been all about, there are some uh, important messages here in the pitch. Um, the Star Wars Happy Meal should reflect the main themes of remembrance and celebration. The theme should tie back to an all-family approach and bring back memories for today's parents of their First time seeing Star Wars 20 years ago. For kids seeing it for the first time, the toys should bring an element of fun discovery that can be shared with their parents and siblings. Or fellow podcasters, like Swank and Barry. Uh, so, yeah. so that's what we open with. years later. That's what we open with. You know, we'll hit them with remembrance and celebration. And then we'll, we'll keep the best stuff in the back, you know, like, like Darth Grimace... <laughs> and the McNuggets, the Star Wars McNuggets. I love, I love how they have rationale. Like you need rationale for a Star Wars Happy Meal. Yeah. Like, and yeah. here's why we're doing it. Guys. Like, yeah. You know, the guys at McDonald's are like, God, just get to the pictures already, will you? <laughs> <laughs> rationale. Each of well, the Star I Wars. I think it's. Yeah. To me, it's clear th these were great ideas. Yeah. Now McDonald's didn't end up getting the. I, I, it's it's interesting to me that you'd have an agency pitching McDonald's. So I wonder if the agency came into. I wonder if the agency was had the Star Wars license and then was mm. pitching it to the restaurants. Because why would you have an agent? I don't know how this works, but imagine. So you have an agency. They come in and they pitch a bunch of Star Wars toys for for Happy Meals, but McDonald's doesn't have the agreement to do it unless. McDonald's is like we want to make a bid to Lucasfilm right on the happy meal on the on the fast food tie-in so we need an agency to come in give us a bunch of ideas that we'll then flip and take to Lucas that that's must be how it works and the the big thing is too that Simon marketing actually went to to court with McDonald's because they actually were accused of rigging the the McDonald's Monopoly game, and there's a whole HBO document. Wow, that's oh, the yes, same that's... company. God, that was the same yeah. agency, really. Yeah. Oh, so amazing. So while they're doing McNugget Buddies, there's like, you know, <laughs> sleazy guys in a back room hey guys, rigging Monopoly pieces. I don't want to spread rumors, but you know who rigged that Monopoly game, don't you? Darth Grimace. Ooh, Darth Grimace. Was <laughs> now, you know, the Happy Meal toys finally did get the Star Wars treatment a little bit down, about 10 years later when the Clone Wars film was released. McDonald's had that. That's right. Yes. And, and like I said, you know, a lot of executives and people who work behind the scenes at McDonald's, they all live in the Chicago area. And my son was going to school with a guy who worked at the McDonald's Corporation when it was they had their home offices in Oak Brook. And he stopped by my house one day. He said, hey, I heard you're a big Star Wars fan. And uh, they gave these gifts to a bunch of executives. And I don't want it. Maybe you would. And it's a gift box set of... McDonald's Whoa. Happy Meal toys. Oh, cool. There it is. From 2008. I and actually, I saw that the real art had one of these in their warehouse. The, yeah. The, the exact, except yeah. It, 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 real art, they left it in the window and it got all faded and stuff. But mine is pretty I minty. I hate that. Yeah. Mine is pretty yeah, minty. I, yeah, I remember those. You had That's uh, beautiful. the big heads on the uh, various vehicles, the iconic vehicles. So. 
Han on top of the Millennium Falcon and Luke on the X-Wing and Leia on the mm -hmm. Blockade Runner and Boba Fett on the Slave One. That's right. I said Slave One. <laughs> Chewie on an ad at That's cool. That's great. Reflective of Return of the Jedi. And Yoda on a Jedi Starfighter. Yeah. Notice that it's to promote the Clone Wars animated show, but it's largely characters from the original trilogy and no Ahsoka. I mean, they we know where their butters. Yeah, it was, it was but that's butter in their bread. The there, three PO. Wait, what? What vehicle is three PO? Oh, he's on the land speeder, and R two is there in the uh, Naboo starfighter, mm -hmm. as seen uh, Anakin starfighter, and then Wicket on a is that a is that a speeder bike? Yes, Wicket on the speeder bike. It's not very canonical, I'll say. No, no, it was not Wicket that was on the speeder bike. Yeah, it's it's original trilogy with uh, Clone Wars packaging. And then there's Ahsoka. She shows up on the box there at the bottom there. Hey, Sartui. So, uh, now, you can't look at any more Happy Meal toys without that corporate pitch speak in the back of your head. Like, <laughs> oh, I know. Kids will be wowed <clears throat> by these big head vehicle wobblers. You know, or something like that. <laughs> That's just great. Well, Barry, what a find. <laughs> Um, that was awesome. You know, and uh, keep your eyes open for any other wild and crazy things you might come across as you, uh, obviously the warehouse is now closed, real art. Yes. But uh, I, I know you're always combing through stuff and looking for the good stuff. So if you find anything else that's like unique and uh, of historical value like that, you know, be sure to lay it on us here yeah. at uh, Rebel Force Radio. Pretty awesome, dude. Of course. Thank you. Happy to share. Thank you. And of course, uh, members of uh, RFR on Patreon who belong to the Babu Freaks RFR RPG tier, they've already seen all of this stuff. And we gave everyone basically their own copy of what Barry scored at uh, Real Art. And uh, so you can go there and download all of the individual pages. If you're a member of that tier, you'll see the post. Uh, as I said, we shared a little bit of it on Babu Freaks, but... This is the first real in-depth look we did into the entire pitch and all of the descriptions <laughs> and everything. I, I hadn't even read it all before we went through it here on the show. And and like I said, we'll put it up on the YouTube so everyone else can see all of the imagery and stuff. Because it was a pretty visual review we just did. And we want everybody to be able to see it. So check out Rebel Force Radio on YouTube. Check out Barry's podcast, Sega Bits. For all the Sega information you could ever possibly want to uh, learn. Yes. I see you have a Sonic 2 poster in the background. <laughs> this is my Sonic side of my uh, collection room. And then the Star Wars stuff mm -hmm. is over there. But uh, yeah, yeah, we, we do podcasts. We do them bi-weekly. We talk about Sega history. Um, we're doing unreleased Dreamcast games this month. Um, but uh, yeah, this is our site. It's been up there for 13 years. Um, still going strong. So, yeah, it's hard, man. Congratulations. This stuff, you know, keeping that longevity is not easy. It is Thank not you. easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. To yeah. have it up that. Yeah. Well, Jason's Keep got it, it tough because he has stuff. to work with me every week. But I mean, <laughs> you know, you call your own shots there, Barry, at Sega Bits. You got a team with you. I, I, I kind of have my Jimmy, you know, mm -hmm. so I, mm -hmm. I have a friend that uh, I, I work with on the show. But uh, yeah, it's it's just the two of us and a small team of writers. Uh and it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I get Jimmy once a month. You get him every week. So Every week, sometimes know. twice a week. Are you kidding? Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of me to go around. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barry, thanks a lot. We'll be seeing you again on the Babu Freaks later this month. And Absolutely. we'll have to get together for one of our uh, good old-fashioned galloping ghost hangouts. Uh, definitely want to do that as we get closer to the holiday season. So. Uh, Can't wait. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. So thanks a lot, man. That that's some really great stuff you laid on us. So a lot of fun. The, Thank you. The Star Wars Happy Meal pitch from 1996. The Happy Dark Meal Christmas. toys that never happened. Yes. Never Absolutely. happened. But they're happy. We've got here. more thanks, Star Wars that never happened coming up in a little bit. We do. But uh appreciate it, Barry. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Great. Thank you, guys. Thanks, buddy. All right. Ba there he goes. Barry, Barry Harmon. Appreciate it. Uh, what do you say? We uh, do some uh, some voicemail when he hears. Yeah, something? yeah. Let's let's here. let's All get right, in. Let's, let's unpack Ahsoka a little bit. We're still unpacking right. Ahsoka, so let's continue. All right, let's go unpack. 
You must contact me. Play back the entire message. What message? Message, Doctor. The message. The Emperor commands you to make contact with him. It's a trick. Send no reply. <laughs> So I was uh, listening to the audio. My uh, work schedule doesn't line up for the live show, but hope to call in someday. Um, have a hot take. Book of Boba Fett has been the best show to explain long periods of history within a short period of time show was not well received so I do believe they have stepped back from the types of things that they have used to tell the story and tie the story together with other other points within the episodes Uh, just my my opinion Uh, thanks I think he brings up a really good point sorry he didn't leave his name or where he was from when you uh, leave us a voicemail, please, please do that. We like to give you credit. What I thought that was interesting here is, you know, some of the complaints that I've had, others have had about Ahsoka is that there are a lot of big gaps and they're big gaps of time for characters that we're very vested in. It's not like we meet this new character and, you know, we're wondering, Oh, will we ever know what their origin is? That's, that's normal. You see that. But when you've got these characters, that we're supposed to care so much about and do after four years of rebels, X number of years of clone wars. And there's this missing gap and there's sort of, we know that there's conflict and there's things that have shaped these characters into who they are at the time that we're seeing them in the, in the current series, but they never, never go back and revisit it. That is something that has been frustrating. And what the caller is, is comparing it to is book of Boba Fett, which told multiple periods Uh, at least three different major periods in Boba Fett's life throughout that series. A lot of flashbacks, you know, the Bacta tank flashbacks and all of that. And that was a device that they relied on very heavily with that series to fill in those gaps. And yet a lot of fans had a pretty strong reaction about that, thinking it was too much exposition, get into the story. Jim, my take on that is I didn't mind the flashbacks. The problem I had with Book of Boba Fett was that the current story that they were telling, Boba Fett taking over as the major domo there, uh, just was kind of boring. Mm -hmm. It wasn't super exciting, and Boba seemed to have lost his edge. I think we wanted to see a little bit more ruthless Boba Fett, but it was all about how he kind of discovered his more peaceful inner (laughs) inner sides, you know. Um, but I didn't have a problem with the structure of the storytelling. In fact, I quite liked that they were covering the, um, you know, some of the backstory f- for Boba Fett. I think the Boba Fett story would have worked out really well if it was Tamora Morrison and they just show him all the way through the Tuscan story. Mm. And, and Boba grows old with the Tuscans. I think that's kind of an interesting story. And that was my favorite parts of the show. The Daimyo yeah. stuff, that was a little undercooked. I just there were there were elements of it that I just, just that just didn't add up to me. The Daimyo stuff. I really the Daimyo, that's right. Not major domo, Daimyo. Daimyo. That's right. Because I really enjoyed those um those scenes of him showing how he survived the Sarlacc pit how mm-hmm. he became a member of their tribe and went on to a spiritual quest and then attempted to introduce technology to the Tuscans and then having to deal with the massacre of his camp and and all of that. I, I, I really enjoy that stuff. The stuff with him, I still don't understand even where the desire to be Jabba's heir apparent I don't understand where that comes from. Why? Because it was never, he never seemed like someone who had a quest for that kind of power, Boba. He always seemed like a loner, an outsider, someone who answered to himself, worked for himself, 
didn't really fit in. Those were my right. old school vibes about Boba. Well, he discovered he discovered on his journey that you need to have a try. Okay, that yes, was, he that did. Was sort of right, a, right. But how they went from sort of family tribe feeling that he had with the Tuscans to a crime family that was a pretty big leap. I I, I thought yes, um, because they could have very easily set up some sort of score that he was trying to settle with either Bib Fortuna, mm. Jabba maybe, but. I think in the in the series, he even says something about he worked for Jabba. He didn't work for Bib Fortuna. Like, he didn't know Bib Fortuna anything. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was just, a, it's, again, one of those things like uh, FJ said when we had him on, you know, could have been fixed in just a line or two of dialogue just to create some some continuity there. But the hang-up I have with Bobo. And I'm somebody who didn't crap on the show. You know that. I I rather enjoyed Mm -hmm. it because I wasn't demanding that much out of it. And the problem with the show is really, it's really at the core. And that's the, the desire to have Tem continue to play this character, even though Tem Morrison is 60 and the Boba Fett character should be about 40, 45 at this time in the timeline. Yeah, It would have been easier to age up Daniel Logan than it was for them to age down Tem Morrison. And Tem just physically doesn't resemble Boba Fett anymore. He doesn't resemble Jango Fett either. He's got that dad bod, you know? <laughs> And again, I'm not yeah. I'm not ripping on him for for looking the way he does because, you know, I'm right there with him. So I'm just talking as somebody who's looking for the authenticity of the storytelling to be reflected in all aspects of the production, including casting. And I don't think Tem ever owned the character of Boba Fett enough to be playing a 60-year-old Boba when he's supposed to be 45. I think Daniel Logan had more ownership of the character. And I'm not just saying that because Danny's a friend of mine. I think there could have been more. You know what the rumors I used to love was uh, some crackpot rumor I heard back in the late 90s that Russell Crowe was going to play Boba Fett in Attack of the Clones. Then my other favorite (laughs) one, fan casting, was Jet Li was going to play Boba Fett. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. I don't remember the Russell Crowe, but I remember the Jet Li. I'm pretty sure I'm the one who told myself that Russell Crowe rumor. (laughs) I said, well, maybe if I I just believe it, it could happen. (laughs) Yeah. But, no, they they went with Tem, and Tem was a great choice for Attack of the Clones, don't get me wrong, as Django Fett. But as a Boba Fett who's supposed to be 40-something, Continuing the story post Sarlacc Pit, I just yeah, I love Tem. I love Tem. It's just there's the age difference. I think is just too vast, yeah. and I think that really ultimately is what hurt the series. That yeah. and the lack of a real prime central antagonist. There was no central antagonist. But I, but I do appreciate the fact that they attempted for the most part, succeeded in giving us a pretty clear picture of what happened to Boba Fett from the time he was in the Sarlacc pit yes. all the way up through you know, his, his most current mission as Daimyo and, on, uh, on Tatooine. Yes, there. and that's exactly the point our anonymous caller was, was uh, making, was that the storytelling is pretty solid all the way through. Right. You you understand. You understand. Now the execution of the story might be lacking in some departments. Um you know, I'm not talking about how well the action sequences came together or anything like that. Sometimes they were good, sometimes they were kind of weird, but I mean Star Wars sort of has a tradition of that. You know, really well, great action sequences and then those moments where you just go, "Uh." Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think too when we look at comparing Ahsoka versus Book of Boba Fett, I know it was sort of a joke in a, in a way, and people were sort of tongue in cheek saying, oh, you know, Filoni's just, you know, he's given us Rebel season five. It's not a joke. It's true. That's exactly what this series was. Because if it wasn't, 
I think they would have taken a similar approach to Ahsoka as they did with Boba Fett and really making her central character and giving the audience a pretty good deep dive into various periods of her life. And they didn't do, they, they, they kind of did it, but it was very, very quick. And the more and more people that I talk to, and don't worry, I'm not fretting. I'm not, you know, overly concerned of them, but just today, as a matter of fact, on the day job, somebody said, I got to ask you about Ahsoka. They go, who the who's Ahsoka and how is she Anakin Skywalker's Padawan? Oh, I heard that. I said, I "Well, come that. on, I come on. That. You know where you, you where you been the last fifteen years?" <laughs> she goes, "I didn't watch the cartoons. Right. <laughs> I got to watch a cartoon now." Yeah. I said, "No." Yeah. You know, it's an animated I mean, series I prefer. The mythology but. has been told in various mediums over the years, and I guess it all depends on how much you care or not. It's the same thing with, mm-hmm. with the Marvel films and the DC films. I didn't read right. a comic book. Well, you know, then you're not a fan, so don't go around saying you are. <laughs> yeah. I'm reverting to that. I'm re- I'm back to that guy. Where I'm just, to, I'm, well, I'm, you're just I'm, not a I'm fan. Team. You're not a big enough fan. Yeah, yeah, you know. I'm going to start carding people at the door. Show me your fandom <laughs> card. <laughs> Did you watch all well, four seasons the- of Rebels? Well, yeah, thanks a lot. We only have time for one voicemail this week because we have a book. We got to give something away. Yes, yes. We got to give it away. We got the book. Last week, Kyle Newman was on the show and he told us all about his latest book, Dungeons and Dragons Lore and Legends. It's a great-looking book. It's unbelievable. I, I, I can't believe Kyle and the gang put this together. And he gave us a book to give away, a signed autographed copy, El- eligible contestants only from the RFR RPG slash Babu Freaks tier and higher on Patreon. Those are the only people who are eligible to win this. And uh, the way they became eligible was... We posted a picture of the front page, the front cover of the book, and everybody in that tier and higher on Patreon commented underneath the post. We got 55 comments. So we're going to use the random number generator. Um, Jason, do you want to do you that? You want me to do that? Yeah, just because you can put yeah, it on screen. That. that way everything is on the up and up. On the up and up. So uh, I just checked. The uh, Patreon comments are locked in at uh, 55. So, Jason, we have the random number generator up on the screen, and it's programmed uh, between a minimum of one and a maximum of 55. And all we have to do is hit the button, and it will show us a random number. And the number that is uh, associated with the RFR Patreon supporter will win the book. Are you ready? I am ready. In three, two, one, generate. Here comes our random number. It is 31. 31 is our random number. So uh, I'm going to pull up our list here and scroll down to 31. And uh, we have our winner. It's David Seitzinger. David Seitzinger. All right. His comment was, great episode as always, can't get enough Kyle. Well, you're going to get a lot more Kyle, David Seitzinger, because we're sending you his latest book. And it's heavy, too. It's thick. It's a hardcover. It is. It's a really great book. And if you're a Dungeons & Dragons fan, you will cherish this. It's over 400 pages of full-color Dungeons & Dragons artwork and information. So congratulations. If you're not really into Dungeons and Dragons, just the artwork alone, I found myself flipping through it. Um, and it's just it's it's beautiful. It really is. If you're into fantasy, uh, it's awesome. It's a great book. It's a great looking book. The guys should be really proud of their work. And and we're proud of them. And we're proud of David Seitzinger for winning a copy of an autograph copy of Dungeons and Dragons Lore and Legends. So I'll get a hold of you, David, and uh, I'll get your address, and we'll make sure Kyle sends that book to you ASAP. So thanks to everyone in our Patreon community who uh, 
participated in this giveaway. There's always something new going on on Patreon, patreon.com slash Rebel Force Radio. We just released a new episode of RFR Q&A this week, Lone Star Ahsoka. Now that the Ahsoka season is coming gone, fans have time to look back to pick it all apart while we are looking ahead to the future, to where the story may go. And joining me for his first time on RFR Q&A is Lone Star Nat to discuss and break down the full season of Ahsoka. And we talk about other Star Wars things too. So great meeting Nat and great talking to him about Ahsoka. And you guys can hear our conversation if you join up to patreon.com slash rebel force radio and show your support for rebel force radio all contributors all supporters get access to the q a rfr all access supporters get access to the q a podcast and the full show video plus they get full show videos each and every week of rebel force radio you get early bird releases ad free early bird releases um, shows like Babu Freaks, RFR RPG, and RFR Q&A, and uh, so much more. Uh, there's always perks galore and a great community, too, over at patreon.com slash Radio. So go over there and join us. Support RFR. Get a bunch of stuff in return and uh, become part of a really killer, cool Star Wars fan community. Patreon.com slash Radio. And then 3CPO, the door slammed, and he said, he said, R2 has been known to make mistakes. And then the door slammed from time to time. And I said, oh, God. (laughs) That's what they missed. Something happened to Luke, because Luke kept messing around out there. Hey, Jake Lloyd here, Anakin Skywalker from The Phantom Menace. Now this is podcasting. Good news for you, my lord. That's good news. Come closer, I have good news. All right, we do have news. We have news this week on Skeleton Crew. Can you believe it? Skeleton Crew looks like it will be the next Disney Plus series that will air, but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer than we thought as it's... Set for, according to this, and what is this? This is the pre-registration, the copyright pre-registration that IP holders have to file in order to protect their IP. So this is the pre-registration from Lucasfilm that um, registers skeleton crew and all that that entails. But what's really interesting about this is that it gives an approximate publication date. And that would be January 2024. Now, what's a little bit interesting here is they says that the uh, approximate completion date is December of 2023. That might be wishful thinking, (laughs) hoping, depending on how the strikes go, uh, whether or not they can get those wrapped up. Because I don't think anyone can work on this thing. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's fully completely filmed. I don't know. I don't know. The waiver got word. You're saying yes yeah, that it's yeah. Com- from what I understood, filmed. it wrapped up real early this year, like January. It had wrapped up shooting, and so any additional work is probably as as far as editing, music, and because uh, you know music is always the last thing to go in, and um, and other production, post production elements. So that's that's what I mean. It's not uncommon for films or TV shows to be worked on all the way up until right before we see them. So that yeah, does My happen. understanding is that nothing is being worked on right now. Well, that's not you true. Can't have their like like Gilroy no, 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 with no, no, uh, no, with no, no, Andor. That's not true. There's an actor strike going on. Nobody's acting right now. And a writer strike. The writer strike has been resolved. But they're not going back. They're not writing. They're not back to work. They're in solidarity with their actor oh. brethren. <laughs> right. And but they but Everything is in the can for the show anyway, so they were strictly in in post-production on it to begin with because they were, from what we earlier heard, that they they were targeting a late 2023 release. Right. Now it got pushed back to 2024, and and who knows why Lucasfilm 
you know, they, they shift their schedule around an awful lot. Strike or no strike. They, they shift their schedule around an awful lot. And, and sometimes they wait to the very last minute to shift some things around because that's the Lucasfilm way. Ready, fire, aim. That's how they do things over there. Yeah. So um, it doesn't surprise me that it's been pushed back to January. What I had been led to believe was the reason why we hadn't received any updates on a premiere date for Skeleton Crew is because the studio is holding out, waiting to see how the actor's strike gets resolved because they want to have Jude Law going out on all the talk shows discussing Skeleton Crew. And... But I don't. I don't think that's make or break to the the actual content being released. I don't think that's make or break, and I think they're going to go ahead and release it in January. And I find it interesting that they filed the registration with the copyright office prior to any of the strikes happening. So it's a target date that they've been looking at even before the strike. So. I think they're going to roll well, they, with well, it. They filed it in July on July third, right? And when did well, the strike start? Writers' strike may have already been underway. The actors' strike didn't start until August, or maybe was it late July? Hmm. I don't know. The summer was a blur, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's reactionary toward at least the actors' strike. I think the the writers' strike was already underway by July. Yeah, it's just odd because with Andor, Gilroy was show running that, but because he's a writer, he was getting pressure from other writers to stop doing his show running right. duties on it. So right. I can't imagine that that being any different for whoever is running Skeleton Crew. I wonder if Filoni is, a- is still at work in his executive pres- position at Lucasfilm, but mm. just not writing anything or not, you know, doing any like Trapper Wolf moments in the volume. <laughs> well, here it is. I'm going to put the uh, pre-registration up on the screen so you can see that. So here's the description of the work. The work is Skeleton Crew. In this case, the episode 101. In the first episode of the Skeleton Crew, we are introduced to four kids who make a mysterious discovery on their seemingly safe home planet and get lost in a strange and dangerous galaxy. Hmm. Finding their way home, meeting unlikely allies and enemies will be a greater adventure than they ever imagined. Uh, there's a number of directors attached to this thing. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, quite a few. We got John Watts, Christopher Ford, David Lowry, The Daniels. Yeah. Everything, everywhere, all at once. That's all at once. What they yeah, do, those guys. Yeah. The Daniels. The Daniels. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard familiar name and uh, Lee Isaac Chung. So definitely one of those uh relay style shows where every episode practically has a different director. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm, oh, you'd I'm, like more consistency. Oh yeah. 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 I just I I mean, you're only dealing with eight episodes a season. I don't know why you need to give it up to eight different directors. I mean, other than just you know, again, it's Lucasfilm is always chasing, you know, the flavor of the month. And so, oh, everything, everywhere, all at once. We got to get those guys. What can we give them? Let's give them a Star Wars movie. Oh, no, we're not making Star Wars movies. OK, well, let's give them an episode of one of our series. OK, yeah, they're hot. It's, I don't know. It's just why they got to cram all of those different creatives into eight episodes of one series. Mm hmm. Doesn't make any sense yeah, to me. May, maybe too many cooks in the kitchen, too many voices at the table. Um, but uh, yeah, because they all want to lift their leg on it. I mean, that's how the, that's how creative people are. Right, right, right. You know, I have some interesting spoilers that uh, well, it could be considered spoilers, but I have details from the teaser shown at Star Wars Celebration London. How about this? Spoiler alert! Yeah. Spoiler alert! Hey, with Spoiler alert. Alert. Very nice, Jason. Boy, yeah, we're thanks. big boys with that graphic. And <laughs> All right, here's uh, here's what we know about the footage from Skeleton Crew screened at Star Wars Celebration London. The footage starts at a school where we follow a couple of kids as they ride a speeder through the forest. One of the girls is wearing a visor. When their parents return home one night, they discover the kids are gone. 
quick flashes of them exploring the galaxy together. The Mandalorian villain Vane, remember the pirate Vane? He makes a. I feel like we saw this. I feel like we had this footage because I remember the kids. I remember their apartment. I remember seeing that shot of Vane. Yeah. yeah. I say, I I have no memory of this. (laughs) The Mandalorian villain Vane makes a fleeting appearance and it appears pirates will be the ones menacing this group. The kids eventually find themselves behind bars. That doesn't ring any bells in front of behind bars. A key floats to the door, and one of them exclaims, He's a Jedi. The Jedi in question removes his hood, and it's Jude Law. Dun, dun, dun. So that's what uh, the footage is. But I yeah, I don't have I don't remember it. But yeah, I've got it right here. I've got the skeleton crew teaser. You do? Oh, well, let's I watch do. it. Let's watch it. All right. Oh, yeah, I kind of remember this. Yeah, okay, they're there in the school. Speeders through a forest. It looks like they're in some garage or something. The girl has the visor. The parents are home. They see the kids are gone. Now here are various shots of them exploring through the galaxy. Um, They're like on a moon. They're flying over a moon. A bunch of kids. Oh, it looks like there's a Max Rebo, a young Max Rebo among the gang. And uh, there's somebody talking to a, a guy with glasses on. Glasses in the Star Wars universe always kind of throws me for a loop. There's a cool droid. There's that guy with the glasses again. I mean, like, they don't have LASIK surgery in a galaxy far, far away. There's the pirate. And and also um, the Rex DJ droid from <laughs> Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, let's go through that again. Well, I, I, I'd like to that's see That's all we have. Again. Um, because there's right. some interest. I want to see a shot of the kids in that cockpit. There they there are. See, go. there's an, he's um, a Max Rebo type, an Ortolan, I think they're called. There's the girl with the visor. There's another kid in the back. There's an, So there's four of them, it looks like. And one of them is the little elephant type. Yeah. What an interesting choice for one of the main group of kids is... A Max Rebo type. Now, we only have about half of what was shown here. It ends very abruptly. Oh, okay. But uh, there's, uh, what's his name, Vane. Vane, the pirate from Mandalorian Season 3. There's the RX droid, DJ droid. It looks like like he's he's the bus driver. Flying a shuttle or something. Yeah, yeah. They serve the same purpose in uh, Star Wars Rebels. Remember in Season 1? That's right. And voiced by Paul Rubens as well. Not going to get Paul for this show. There's mom and dad talking about the kids being missing. Remember, this is supposed to have a very Stranger Things vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole idea of this show, taking these kids into a strange and dangerous galaxy, almost reeks of them intersecting with Ahsoka, Balin, Shin, and Sabine. It really seems like it's going to tie in. And a lot of people have been talking, what if Balin, Skull, actor Ray Stevenson shot sequences for this show before he passed away? Maybe we Mm. haven't seen the last of Balin, Skull. I don't know. I think it's 50-50, 50-50 at best. But uh, I, I think it's the timing of it all with them getting lost in the galaxy. This is Mandoverse in the timeline, Mandoverse era. Right. So uh, yeah, it's we'll sort see. of like Lost in Space meets Star Wars. And the thing that yes. we don't see in this footage is Jude Law, though the you know the, some of the imagery that we've seen is this is this stuff is are th- is this an official photo right here. This Jude Law fit picture was yes, this officially I, I, released. It, or is it this sure a fan? looks. Maybe it's so hard to tell these days. In a magazine or so I can't tell, but you yeah. know, I don't know what's been released and what hasn't been. All I know is that Lucasfilm sends us nothing, so we don't get pictures. Yeah, or right. Anything from those guys. So right. we're all we're just left to guess, like everyone else. Except, uh, oh, what did I hear? Oh, I heard something good. I heard something good this week. Apparently, someone, somebody told me this who has connections with the cast of the Ahsoka series. They mm-hmm. told me that a member of the cast is telling friends privately 
that the Ahsoka season two is a done deal, and it's totally going to happen, one hundred percent a go. Ah, yeah, yeah. This is a cast member, and that's all I done can deal. Say. So we don't I, have to worry about Bob Iger's cuts getting in the way of us seeing resolution to this. Well, you never know. I mean, you never know. You never know. But, I mean, I bet the show will. I, I don't know what the cost of the Ahsoka show was, but it sure looked expensive. And, um, I, you know, what kind of, who knows, who knows what Bob Iger's thinking. But I believe that the big tentpole things like Star Wars and Marvel, I think those are largely going to be able to maintain the production standards based on a proper budget. It's just they won't be throwing around the money as much as they have been for so many different things. I think it's going to be a much more focused thing, but I don't think we're going to be in a place where we're seeing substandard Star Wars because of lack of budget. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but... Also, I, I don't see Iger making $350 million movies anymore <laughs> because that's just not sustainable. No, no. And he's he's got a he's got a fight on his hands with the Disney board right now. There's a there's a guy, I can't think of his name, but he's been he's been using this downturn in the Disney stock to buy up more and more shares. And he has quite a healthy uh stake in the company now and he's trying to use that to get a seat on the board or get multiple seats on the board so he can bring in you know his team and really challenge Iger he's really he's really um leveling some pretty heavy accusations at Bob and his just uh what you were talking about earlier which is just overpaying he literally says he's been overpaying for content for years yes and it's in the end it's screwing the stockholders and uh he needs to be held accountable and there's yeah so there's it's a big bob flex is, for bob it's a big flex for him to say look how expensive i can make a movie <laughs> look look how <laughs> well, much this thing does. costs me <laughs> that's a flex for him well i can i can tell you what it does at least in terms of live theater you know disney as a live theater producer since Beauty and the Beast went to Broadway 20 some years ago, 25 years ago, whatever it's been now. What it has done is they've, they because they have almost unlimited coffers, mm-hmm. they've got big, big, big uh, bank accounts. They've raised the bar on the expectation of what, of what it is to go to a Broadway show to the point that the smaller shows mm. just don't look as attractive because they can't bring the big Broadway or the big uh, Disney magic. And I think that that is kind of part of their uh, their strategy, which is to outspend the competition so that their stuff looks better and is more extravagant. So you know I'm never going to get a better theatrical experience than a, a, a Disney film or a Disney Marvel film or what have you. Yeah. So I think that has been part of the strategy, yeah. really, is to outspend the competition. Yeah. I mean, that's what the big box stores did to all the mom and pop shops all over America. You know, they came in with the same type of uh, operation. So, uh, yeah. But that's Skeleton Crew, so hopefully it'll be coming at the beginning of next year. I uh, we haven't heard anything about a Bad Batch season three outside of Star Wars Celebration London, where it was confirmed, and I believe right. they confirmed we would be getting it next year, but we just don't know when. I was hoping for a premiere earlier in the year, much like last year. But if we got Skeleton Crew coming on, then let's just ride that wave. Yeah, yeah I think that it's likely to be Skeleton Crew, yeah, and then a uh, spring Bad Batch. Season three, yes. and then maybe uh, spring twenty. Drop the acolyte over the summer and hit us in the fall right. with twelve episodes of Andor season two. Yep, so I think that's exactly it. And maybe we'd get a winter twenty twenty four Mando season four. Nah, nah that you won't don't see happen it until twenty five. Yeah, that won't happen. And, and the so Ahsoka then they won't have anything two. for the holidays. Mando season four will happen twenty twenty five along with Ahsoka Season 2. And then afterwards, yeah. everything will be ramping up toward getting those characters in a movie 
directed by Filoni. So that leaves a big that leaves a big gap after the summer uh, on Disney Plus in 2024, which has been typically you know that holiday time has been Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I mean. Elements outside of everyone's control is kind of messing with uh, the rhythm in, of the release of all of these things. So let's just hope that uh, these these strikes will get resolved and uh, everyone will get back to work entertaining us. Because that's what we're here that's for, right. the entertainment. So, so much Star Wars stuff happening, so much stuff going to happen, but so much stuff didn't happen. Much like... The Star Wars Happy Meal toys of the 90s, they didn't happen. And we've known that lots and lots of creatives have passed through the hallways at Lucasfilm only to have nothing happen. Benioff and Weiss, Lord and Miller, Patty Jenkins, Justin Simeon, Colin Trevorrow, Damon Lindelof, Stephen Daltrey, Simon Kimberg, Josh Trank, Zack Snyder, even George Lucas himself. Nothing happens. And we have another couple more names to add to that list. David S. Goyer, who wrote those great Dark Knight films for DC and uh, and a bunch of other things. I think he... Uh, we did uh, Batman v. Superman. Yeah, he did yeah. Superman Returns. He yeah, did yeah. Batman Begins, yeah, yeah. which is one of my favorites. Yeah, the Nolan that's a real film, good one. He did The that. first Nolan film. He certainly has had his hands in uh, some franchise entertainment over the years, David S. Goyer. And he broke some news to Josh Horwitz on the show, Happy, Sad, Confused. He broke the news that he was writing a Star Wars film that got scrapped and there was a director attached to the film. So let's just uh, take a look at the video here of David S. Goyer talking to Josh Horowitz on Happy, Sad, Confused, breaking the news about his scrapped Star Wars film. I wrote an unproduced Star Wars movie that Guillermo del Toro was going to direct. That was about four years ago. And then I have a, I also wrote an unproduced uh, I have a scriptment for a uh, an Origins of the Jedi movie, also for Star Wars, that I wrote for them uh, that took place 25,000 years before um, the first Star Wars film. That would have been, I got to do the Vader Immortal VR thing, but uh, uh, dabbling in Star Wars, you know, would have been fun for me. Uh, what happened, you know, Guillermo, Guillermo and Star Wars and you seems like a no-brainer to Greenlight. What happened? There was just a lot of behind stuff going on at Lucasfilm at the time, but uh, it, it, it's a cool script. Uh, you, you'll have, to, I, have you had Guillermo on the show? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll, I should I, put that up. You have to ask him about that next time he's on. It's a cool script. I will. There's well, a lot of cool, there's a lot of cool artwork from it that was produced. Oh. Mm. So not just a script, but some concept work uh, also going along with it. Well, what could it be? Well, <laughs> well, we know it was not a, it's not really a secret because he's, Talked about it in the past. Guillermo yeah. has. So after this interview went live, uh, Guillermo del Toro responded via Twitter or X or whatever they call it. Um, he uh, shared the interview, shared a link to the interview, and said, uh, Can't say much, but just maybe two letters, J and BB. Or is that three letters? So JBB. And he's not talking about BB8. He's talking about Jabba. Jabba Can I buy a vowel? Yeah, <laughs> buy an Guillermo? A. Buy an A and you won. But so, yeah, back in 2015, he did an interview with Yahoo Movies and he said, this is me as a fat geek just geeking out and talking about it. I would do the sort of Godfather saga that Jabba the Hutt had to go through to gain control. One, because it's a character that looks the most like me, and I like him. I love the idea of a hut type of mafia, a very complex coup. I just love the character. So um, so there he, he had talked about doing, um, that he would like to do a Jabba movie. And so maybe he finally got his, his pitch meeting at Lucasfilm, and they said, get to work, young man. And uh, David S. Goyer was brought on board to develop the script with Guillermo. 
and uh, and so he he finally he finally came clean uh, just this week. Jason Di- Guillermo del Toro finally came totally clean. He was mm-hmm. um, he was at a tenth anniversary screening of his film Pacific Rim, and he spoke to Collider about the job of the Hut movie he was working on with screenwriter David S. Goyer and confirms that, yes, it was indeed Job of the Hut. So here's Guillermo del Toro. Well, I believe a movie is going to happen when the Blu-ray comes out. <laughs> that's, when, that's when I know it's going to happen. You know, so it, it always, in the last moment, things go away. I've had it happen many, many, many times. Uh, we have uh, the rise and fall of Jabba the Hutt. So, uh, so I, I was super happy. We were doing a lot of stuff. We were, and then, uh, you know, it's not my property. It's not my money. It's one of those 30 screenplays that goes away, you know. And I sometimes I'm bitter. Sometimes I'm not. I always turn to my team and say, good practice, guys. Good practice. We designed a great world. We designed great stuff. We learned. So you, you can never be ungrateful with life. You can, you know, whatever life sends you, there's something to be learned from it. I like it. I like the zen of Guillermo del Toro. Uh, don't be irritated. But if they got so far as they were actually creating artwork for it, that's a lot further than some of the projects we've heard tell about uh, when it comes to Star Wars films. So it sounds like they felt like this thing was really a go and to have the rug pulled out of them. But as you said earlier, I mean, they join a, quite a roster of of names that have had have one time been attached to Star Wars projects. Um, you know, Star Wars, I guess, is the the one the girl that everybody wants to take to the dance and she only has time to... <laughs> Dance with so many. Yeah, it just amazes me, though, that you send guys like Guillermo del Toro and Zack Snyder home. But they hand the Ray movie over to a director who I think is very largely unproven. She's only directed two episodes of Ms. Marvel. It just amazes me that they pluck people out of obscurity and say, you're the one who's going to work on Star Wars when... Guys like Del Toro and and Damon Lindelof and and all those guys, they get sent home. It just it it astonishes yeah. me. I think maybe but we haven't seen any of those movies. You know that Ray movie's not out yet. Right, right. I I understand. I understand. Yeah, as, as Guillermo was saying, he doesn't believe the movie's going to happen until the Blu-ray comes out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <You> see, <laughs> maybe his relaxes. movie will be an extra on a Star Wars Blu-ray or something. <laughs> he doesn't know. He yeah. seems to take it in stride, but he does admit that he's bitter about the whole process and how it all fell apart. And um, yeah. also uh, very notable uh, to go back to that David S. Goyer interview. He reveals he also worked on a full treatment for... The origin of the Jedi story from 25,000 years ago. I thought that, according to Kathleen Kennedy, it was James Mangold who came to her and pitched her <laughs> on that whole idea. Well, that's a bunch of bunk because Lucasfilm has been developing this origin of the Jedi story for like a decade now. And so many names have been attached it to was it. Gr- it was Game of Thrones, Star Wars, and it was start- started with the Game of Thrones writers. Right, right. And they, I think those guys walked away. I think they bailed. But it just it just didn't work out. I mean, the wrong talent is constantly being brought in. So maybe going with an unknown director who only has directed a few episodes of Ms. Marvel and a few other things, maybe they need somebody that they can keep under their control a little more. You know, maybe the studio is taking much more leadership in, in the way that these stories are developed. Somebody like that coming in and directing a few episodes of one of the live action series makes sense, but to give him a full feature film, yikes! In this case, essentially episode ten, right? For all intents and purposes, right? So it it seems like they're maybe they're looking for someone who's a little more easier to control. They went through the process with James Mangold and and discovered they liked working with him on Indiana Jones. So give him a shot at this uh, origin of the Jedi story. Uh, but David S. Goyer worked on it, uh, Benny and Weiss, Laetta Caligridis, and uh, probably countless other names. Uh, this this thing's been going through a lot of different people, and right now it's it's sitting in James Mangold's inbox. So, 
who knows if this movie is ever going to be made. It's it's hard, Jason, when we talk about these future films, and it's hard to, you know, like you say, have confidence that they'll actually be made at this point. I've lost so much confidence in Lucasfilm. And we've been, right. as a fan base, we've been through the ringer with all of these announcements and cancellations and pulling the plug on the cinematic series. And, I mean, we they get our hopes up on so many things, and then we just get let down. But yet, we are the toxic fans. Base. We are the right, ones who are the cynical. problem. Here. Like, <laughs> my God, how many bullets can you launch at us before you know? I mean, we're still standing. We're still here. We're still part of the program. How can we be right? I'm like, I don't understand why these people don't have more confidence and faith in Lucasfilm anymore. I I don't know. Why don't we? Why don't we? So whatever. I'm I'm really excited for all of the things they have announced: the James Mangold origin of the Jedi, the Ray film, and the Filoni Mandoverse film. I think that those are all great ideas. I just hope they're not just throwing everything up against the wall and hoping something sticks. I hope that all right. three of these films get made. I really want to see them, and hopefully they can find the right talent to make it happen. But apparently David S. Goyer and Guillermo del Toro are not part of that roster. So. So make of it what you want. Right. In more Star All Wars, right. that never happened news. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember these guys? In sync. Yeah, I think they're back. They are back. Yeah. Yeah, In sync is back. They uh I don't think they've announced it yet, but we can all all the smart money is pointing that they're going to be going on a world tour. They they reunited for the uh, MTV Video Awards, giving Taylor Swift an award. And uh, I think they're doing a song on that new Trolls movie soundtrack. So mm -hmm. that's going to sort of kick it off. And so Justin Timberlake decided to go back to his boys. And they've been making the rounds because they're getting, you know, trying to develop, uh, you know, drum up a lot of hype for what is, like I said, likely going to be a new album, world tour. And, uh, you know, when we as Star Wars fans think of NSYNC, all we can think about is that they came this close to being in episode two, Attack of the Clones. And man, you know, before the internet was really the internet, oh, that brought just shockwaves across <laughs> the, the, the fandom. Oh my God, a boy band, <laughs> a boy band in Star Wars. And I think the rumor was that uh, G George's daughters really loved NSYNC. And, you know, George was, George is a dad. And if you have the ability to take the hottest pop superstars and uh, get your daughters to meet them and put them in your Star Wars movie, yeah, yeah you're going to do it. Impress your kids. It, but it didn't happen. I believe they were supposed we to be really Jedi. don't know exactly why. I mm -hmm. think they were supposed to be Jedi. Well, we do know exactly why. It was because of the fan reaction. They ended up on the cutting room floor. And I think th I think we might get has that been confirmed? Well, though? I think I mean, we get we might get some insight into what really happened in some of these clips yeah. we're going to play here in just a minute. Because uh, well, they were just going to be Jedi on the Battle of Geonosis. That's right. You know, in robes. I don't think they were. You know, they certainly would be strutting, be bopping, and scatting. <laughs> They're in sync tunes across the plains there in uh, Ge <laughs> Geonosis. Jeez. So they got the guys together on one of those uh, YouTube shows where they're eating spicy hot wings. And I guess, you know, if, if you're being interviewed. Are there you're... multiples of those? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like it. Uh, th this one's called there Hot are, Ones. There actually, I think. Hot Ones. Yeah, this one this is... is the original, I yeah, believe. I think you're supposed to, like, the hot spices work as some sort of, like, truth serum or something. So you, <laughs> you give a better interview. I don't know how that works. I've never really been able to sit through the show. We should try that. Maybe we'll come up with our own gimmick. <laughs> I don't know. Really hot. Persist. We'll do sour. We'll do, like, a real sour candy that we give to people as we interview them. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. We'll have to workshop that. Hot ones. Hot ones. Hot ones. So in sync showed up on hot ones, including Justin Timberlake. And so they were all there. And the question came up. What happened? Why weren't you guys supposed to be in Attack of the Clones? What went down there? And so this is great because this is the first time you have the whole band together. And yeah. this topic has been presented so uh they they talk about it i don't know who any of these in sinkers are so you'll just have to listen to their voices and pick them out yourself jason will know right away who they all are i, oh, I know him. i know him. 
<laughs> Here we go. Though cut from the final edit, is true that NSYNC was cast as Jedi warriors in Star Wars mm. Attack of the Clones? Mm, now true. we're getting to oh. the nitty gritty <laughs> yeah. questions. Ask Very true. <laughs> true. We were the three. A few of us, yeah. Never yeah. made it to I think the I remember. I think I remember us getting a call. It's like, you're never going to believe what happened. Yeah. We were we were we were uh, stormtroopers. We're, no, we're we're Jedi. 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 Yeah. Jedi. We had to like learn a bit of uh, sword choreography. Yeah, right. yeah, heck yeah. Well, me and Lance were so butt hurt. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> but they got cut out anyway. When you guys so. got cut out, we were like. <laughs> 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 the dumbest thing though is as we were doing this shit, the seeds, you're literally going boom, boom, like an idiot. I <laughs> wish they had, I wish they had like, video. Yeah. I wish they had the they video do. of us somewhere. I'm, well, I'm they sure they do because they filmed it. I have asked. Let's Rick, cut to it right now. I've asked, <laughs> I've asked Rick here McCallum, it is. the producer, Rick McCallum, where's the footage? Because I know he has it. So let's get that footage, please. I want to see it. Well, didn't the Star Wars fans go crazy now, on us while they edited yeah. it out? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. They did not like that yeah. idea. <laughs> All right, there it is. Yeah. How is it You're that welcome. we haven't seen <laughs> this footage? I mean, every time Daisy Ridley and Oscar Isaac broke into a dance between shooting scenes on the sequel films, we were provided with that footage via documentaries or whatever. How come we can't see in sync? Is it going to upset Why the fan base that, that much? Well, I think... Uh... That is that is odd. That is odd. It makes me want. Well, Joey Fatone, who has also been at Rancho Obi Wan, by the way, I think yes. he filmed uh, his Food Network show <laughs> over there at Rancho yeah. Obi Wan. Um, so he he says that uh, he reached out to Rick McCallum. He believes for sure that they have it, that it exists. Oh yeah. But yeah, I mean, of course, there hasn't been. I mean, after the DVDs came out for the prequel films, we've never really had a a revisit to the making of those movies. You know, unlike the original trilogy where you had making of happening even into the 90s, there was uh, new documentaries being made. So the prequels, they're kind of, they, they have those documentaries on the DVDs and that's sort of, that's sort of it. That's it. But that stuff is there. I mean, Attack of the mm. Clones was all shot in digital, so it's not like the film degraded or anything. They can't use that excuse. It's on someone's hard drive somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure one of the Lucas girls have it. I'm sure Amanda or... Right. <laughs> so, But it uh, wasn't all of them. It was just uh, J.C., Joey, and Chris. Lance and Justin Timberlake were not available. Yeah. And, of course, they got the phone call. Guess what we got to do? Wow. So Chris Kirkpatrick, he talked about this a couple of years ago, and he revealed how they were asked to be in Attack of the Clones. So this is in sync. Chris Kirkpatrick, what instrument does he play? Is he their bass player or something? What? Uh, no, they're all vocalists. So uh, he's the he's the tenor. He's the he's the top. He takes the top notes. So let's hear what he had to say about Attack of the Clones. How they were asked to be in the film. So George Lucas' daughter was a big fan. Came to one of our shows. Do you remember this now? And we freaked out. And we're all just around him going, I would have like, freaked out pushing his poor daughter probably out of the way just to be like, oh, my God, George Lucas. <laughs> and then Joey, who has no cooth or anything at all, Joey, we need to be Joey. in the next movie. Of course he did. And I'm like, Joey, shut up right now. We're just meeting George Lucas. Like, let's just let it. And he goes, OK. And I'm like, I mean, great idea. <laughs> yeah, if you don't ask, you don't get what you don't ask. And. Joey's like, when am I ever going to get this opportunity again? I'm going, I'm going for broke, man. Not only am I going to meet George Lucas, I'm going to ask to be in the movie. Right. And guess what, Chris? You ended up on the set of Attack of the Clones because of your uncouth friend who just went for it. Some of these superstars just turn to just such blubbering idiots when they they get in the the same room with George Lucas. I remember Ashton Kutcher <laughs> once talked about how he was on some sort of yacht party or something and George Lucas was there and there was a live band playing on the deck of the yacht and everything. And so to impress George, Ashton said he started doing a robot dance, <laughs> thinking that George would be impressed by that. Oh, yeah, look at him. He's just like a droid, this guy. He's just like a droid. <laughs> You're in the next one, Ashton Kutcher. You're in the next one. <laughs> so, but yeah. And there's some great mocap. <laughs> so they push, you know, they push 
uh, like Katie Lucas out of the way. She's like on the ground crying, and they're all like getting George <laughs> Lucas's autograph. I was like, well, you got to make it up to my daughter and be in a movie. Yeah, we'll you do know, it. I we'll do Katie it. Katie Lucas being like uh, uh, Mr. Krabs' daughter. Remember, she was the whale, and uh, mm-hmm. she was. <laughs> And then you got a little Mr. Krabs, who's very George-like in some ways. So I could see the dynamics between the two. So, Dad, I hope <laughs> she's always crying. I hope we get footage of NSYNC shoving Katie Lucas to the ground, and I hope we get footage of them their deleted footage from Star Wars: Attack of the Clones. Now, a few years ago, through a source of mine, I was actually able to uh, score some audio footage. Of a scene mm. that NSYNC was supposed to be in in Star Wars. So this, it wasn't just NSYNC that got cut out of the film. This entire sequence, it's about a minute and a half long. And this entire sequence got cut out of the film. So uh, I can only play the audio. They withheld the video from mm-hmm. me because, you know, it's, it's pretty hot stuff. And could get in a lot of trouble if it ever leaked onto YouTube. But here on the podcast, they figure it's okay if you actually heard a little bit of NSYNC audio from... Attack of the Clones. This is deleted footage. Master Windy, we have but one choice. I know, Obi-Wan. We have to do it. In order to save the universe from tyranny and oppression, we have to let InSync kick the funk out Nizzity New School style. Ladies and gentlemen, InSync! Oh, girl. You know I love you. All Jedi's report to Space Station Alpha Quattro by order of the Force. Oh, girl, it ain't over yet. You thumped and down my heart like you was Boba Fett. Without you, I feel so alone. Like I was attacked, attacked. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, because you're my only hope. (laughs) (laughs) That's, I mean, classic. Not SNL. That's that's classic moment from the Lucasfilm vaults that will never be heard anywhere else other than RFR, Mm -hmm. the the very Mm -hmm. rare. Well, it's actually Katie Lucas's ringtone. (laughs) Yeah. Right. When you call her, you'll hear that whole song, all minute and 30 seconds yeah, of it. Yeah, she still goes to physical therapy, too, from when they shoved her to the ground <laughs> to go see George. <laughs> Joey pushing her down. Can we be in the next movie? Okay. What do you think, Katie? Well, that that's a great moment. That that could be a moment, a Star Wars and pop culture moment, but it's uh, it landed in oh, the newer sure segment. I think we got time for one Star Wars and pop culture. I think we do, but I I do like that that is cross segment. Yeah, into Star Wars and pop culture could fit in either category. Rebel Force Radio. You've already made that Star Wars reference. Your source for the Force. Star Wars parody. (laughs) All right. Well, not only is this Star Wars and pop culture one of my favorite segments, but it features. One of my all-time favorite subjects, and that is Liam Neeson. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Oh, yeah, sure, you know. Oh, quite John himself, you know. So he <laughs> appeared on Conan, and this was you know, a few weeks ago, but it's so worth hearing. The show is called Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. You can find it Great anywhere. Great podcast. It's a really just, I mean, Conan is so funny and so just a great interviewer. And he and Liam Neeson have genuine rapport, solid chemistry, and they know each other. And I think Liam loves to bring the funny when he's hanging out with Conan. And he does oh, so. they're two Irish guys, you know? Well, there so you go. Uh, there you go. Yeah. You, you, you put a couple of us in a room and the, the laughs ensue. So um, Conan, obviously a pretty well-schooled Star Wars fan. Sometimes he downplays it. But he knows the wars. He certainly does. And 
of course, with Liam Neeson sitting across the table from him, he's going to ask him about some of his history as Qui-Gon Jinn in the Star Wars prequels. Uh, the first thing we're going to hear is uh, Liam talking about Star Wars fans. So that's us, oh. Swank, and everyone <laughs> listening to this. is Liam's going to talk about us. Here we go. I mean, it is a cult. It is, yeah. <laughs> There's so many... Movies and spin-offs now, I think. No, you're diluting the whole thing, I think. That's yeah. my personal thing. But yeah, occasionally, you know, you'll say, oh, there's kids after a Star Wars autograph and I don't want to give autographs. I'm in an airport. Oh, it's not the kid. It's the grandfather. There he is. <laughs> or the dad. You know, horn-rimmed glasses and a beard. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, they become 11-year-old. Okay. Sorry, Liam. You here's your curse. You get to be Santa Claus for the rest of your life, bringing smiles and joy to everyone's face. Oh, yeah, you know, rough life. But you don't <laughs> understand, Swank. You know, I start signing one in the uh, airport, you know, and the next thing you know, a line is formed. They they have a queue. There's a queue, oh. and I'm I'm gonna miss my flight. I can't be signing. Oh. And then, and yeah, right. Court, right. There he is with the horn rims and the beard. You know. In the beard. <laughs> that does, doesn't match a stereotype. I don't know what does, you know. I've opened I your eyes at the convention center, Swank. You look around. <laughs> I, not arguing with that, i tell you that. So here's some deep, uh, here's a deep yeah. cut. Here comes a deep cut. Liam uh -oh. talks about working with his co-star in The Phantom Menace. You, you know who that co-star is, don't you? Yeah, you and McGregor. No, not that co-star. Oh, Natalie Portman. No, not that co-star. Uh, uh, Ray Park, Darth Maul? Oh, yeah, you know, he would jump around and kick and stuff, but not him, no. Let's talk about Watto. Uh, yeah, oh, sure, you know. Watto? <laughs> Let's talk about Watto. <laughs> like he's a real person? So, right. yeah, he talks He talks <laughs> about working with Watto. Here it is, only on Conan. I was supposed to be doing the scene with this little flying sort of monster that was this kid that would eventually be Darth Vader. He was mm -hmm. nine years of age. Sure. Um, it, it was a big, long scene with this flying thing. No, what do you want? That's all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know what this thing was going to look like. So I'm, you know, I'm acting to a guy with a stick and an orange or a green tennis ball stuck in the top that's right. going to be right. eventually this flying little monster. You know? Right. So I'm in the makeup chair, I got my wig on, my beard and all that stuff. And she says, oh, Liam, uh, makeup lady says, um, I did see, uh, you know, a mock-up of the wee monster. You could be a monkey smoking the pipe. No one's going to be looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> because that's Isn't that nice to hear just before you I go know, out? before you do. And I had a lot of lines to say on this thing, you know, to this <laughs> tennis ball, you know. And right enough, you see the scene, it's like, oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> what are you doing here, Jedi? <laughs> I love his you impersonation. You could be a monkey smoking a pipe and no one would be looking at yeah, you. Yeah. Ironically, uh, it was, uh, I don't know, Watto, was he, was he smoking? Can't remember if Watto was smoking. No, no maybe he in some smoking, of the concept but, arts, but not on screen. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, a monkey smoking a pipe sounds a lot like a creature idea concept from Star Wars. Oh yeah, sure, you know. But you gotta understand, Swank. The the lady in the makeup chair was saying that I could be talking to a monkey smoking in a pipe, but nobody's gonna be looking at me because they're gonna be so amazed by the special effect of Watto. Watto stole right. the scene from me, you know. You know, I'm I'm yeah, Schindler. Indeed he did. I'm Schindler, you know. <laughs> and he's got Watto stealing the scene from me, you know. Oh, whatever. <laughs> the, 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 the Jedi. With the... Oh, yeah, you, you like that voice. Hey, Jedi, Jedi. Hey, hey. Hey, you know. <laughs> I could have been a monkey smoking a pipe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. So we got those two clips. And uh, the final clip we're going to hear from Liam Neeson, Kwai John is uh, he talks to Conan about using the lightsabers. And we'll probably hear him uh, have a story that might sound similar to what, uh, who was saying that they, oh, uh, in sync, Joey Fatone said, you, you give him the lightsaber, he makes that sound, right? 
I mean, how many actors have relayed that? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe many, but they don't do it with the hilarious comical stylings of uh, (laughs) Liam Neeson. Roll the tape. The first time we actually had to use pull the lightsaber, and there's only a handle. Right, there's a handle, and they add the effect later. Yeah, and maybe a little bit of uh, aluminum tube with green tape. Mine's was green because I'm Irish, Irish Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> and yours was red or something. Yeah. So the first time we got to pull them to start a little fight, you know, we both automatically went and action. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you were doing that with your mouth? I know, I know. <laughs> and George, George said, uh, let's cut there. Boys, we can add that in later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, we knew that. <laughs> I, do, I do love the idea of, you know, Alec Guinness, you know, uh, uh, who else? Who else would be hilarious in it on the set? Well, Alec Guinness would have done Christopher Lee, I love that. Alec Guinness. Well, right, have Alec done. wouldn't have known. He that's wouldn't have known true, what it sounds like. He didn't know. For all he knew, it was going to sound like metal clacking, you know, itself. But it would sound like a monkey smoking a pipe. <laughs> you know, I used to love to watch Conan on the late night. You know, but I remember Andy Richter swank. Yeah, you know. Andy I Richter do remember was. Andy Richter, yeah. I told GL, George, I said, you know, Andy, you'd be a good Jedi, you know. You may keep making these Jedi. things, you know. I mean, nobody's going to care. It's They spread it all so thin, you know. You could put the, <laughs> you could put a, you could put the masturbating bear from Conan show right in there as a Jedi. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's, he's a wonderful actor, you know. I should have asked Deborah Chu. About Andy Richter and the masturbating bear. <laughs> well, you know, that ship has sailed, you know. You know what else is about ready to sail, Swank? My Trouble foot up your ass, ass, that's what. So, yeah, sure, you know. <laughs> I'm out of here. All right. Okay, well, that's going to do it. That'll uh, wrap things up for us this week. Wow, this truly was the Star Wars that could have been. Starting off with the uh, amazing amazing slate of proposed Happy Meal premium items. That was very cool. Big thanks to Barry Harmon for dropping by and laying that on us. Wow, that was awesome. And then, of course, the the rise and fall of Jabba the Hutt, the movie that could have been by director Guillermo del Toro. Got as far as concept art, a script. He was pretty excited about it. And then in sync, Jedi Knights didn't happen. And then lastly, a monkey smoking a pipe. We never got that, unfortunately. I told George, you know, Andy Richter, he would have been a great Jedi. You know, he didn't listen. He'd have been that's a great some, monkey happen. smoking a pipe is what he would have been. That's that's who they should have got. All right, Rebel Force Radio, if you need more of it in your life. And why wouldn't you? There's a couple places you can go in between releases of podcast episodes. One place you can go is Patreon. It's the best place you can go. Go to patreon.com slash Rebel Force Radio for a weekly full show video with the all access tier. So the podcast you're listening to now, you could be watching, which is very helpful when we have things like the Happy Meal toys and in sync. That kind of thing. You can be looking at what we're looking at. Also, exclusive podcasts you can't get anywhere else, like RFR Q and A, like RFR RPG, and the Babu Freaks. And it is a great community of Star Wars fans. You hear many of them call as callers on our after shows. So if you want to hang out with more people like that, that's the place to find them. Uh, speaking of our after shows, those are found on YouTube. And in addition to those, you can find a whole repository of. Greatest hits from Rebel Force Radio's history over at youtube.com slash Rebel Force Radio. Please, when you watch these videos, it's very helpful if you give them a thumbs up, so like them, and leave a comment. Leave a comment. I know, you know, a lot of the YouTubers, they're like, they ask you a question. Oh, you gotta leave the answer right down below. I, I'm not asking any questions. I just, just, just put best video ever. I don't care what you put. 
uh, put something in the comments because YouTube cares about that. It shows engagement and it shows that you care. No, it's very helpful. All kidding aside, it is very helpful. Uh, please follow us on our socials. We're on Instagram and Facebook at Rebel Force Radio. So check us out there. And the website for all things and everything, Rebel Force Radio, rebelforceradio.com. But if you want to help us out, the best thing you can do is do exactly what you're doing right now. You're listening. You're watching. You're engaged. We know you're engaged. And uh, tell your friends. Let them know about Rebel Force Radio. You think everybody knows about us? No. Not everybody. We need you to spread the word. Tell them about the podcast that you're listening to. If you are listening, we'd love to make sure that you continue to listen. One way to do that is to subscribe. So uh, don't just, you know, get in the on the podcatcher and look us up. Everyone. Subscribe. That way that the, the episodes get delivered to your device. And when you're a subscriber, a lot of times they actually show up before you wait for the feed to uh, refresh just as you're browsing podcast feeds. Get that subscription. They get updated immediately. So you never miss a show. Uh, in addition to those subscriptions, we love to have those reviews. We've been review bombed a bit lately. So uh, apparently people aren't <laughs> listening to our one rule. What's Make them one good. Rule? Make yeah. them good. Good. <laughs> like a monkey smoking a cigar. Good. <laughs> <laughs> They're still funny, though. We've been tossing a few of them back and forth on the old Jedi Council, having some laughs. laughs. All right. Well, that'll do it for us this week. We'll be back next week for more Rebel Force Radio. Love you all so much. Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you next time for Rebel Force Radio. I'm Jason. I'm Jimmy Mack. And remember, the Force will be with you always. You could be a monkey smoking the pipe. No one's going to be looking at you. <laughs>